us should all be doing that, and certainly to invite him in with us, but also just to prepare our hearts, to prepare our hearts to hear through worship, through song, and also when we open up this word. That God would just fill the soil of our hearts and allow us to be able to receive him uh, in powerful new ways, in, in, a, in a way that maybe we haven't been touched in the past, uh, a way that only he can orchestrate. For myself as well, because I stand out in this way and hopefully don't interfere. I uh, heard a song this morning, I think it's a Catholic Brown song. Uh, Jesus, friend of sinners. Anybody know? Is it, is it Catholic Brown? And I may get this verse wrong, but uh, part of our job as Christians, or uh, I don't know if it's a job as much as it is a caution, that is to get out of this way at times, if not all the time. And it says, The world is running towards you. But they keep tripping over me. And I think that's an interesting verse in that song. That that, um, that sometimes we can get in the way. And so today, as we go about our uh, listening to the word and worshiping, and then getting into communion and the sweet fellowship of communion, is, is a time to kind of push all push all that stuff aside uh, of self that can cause people to trip. And I'm guilty of it. Uh, but to be able to let it go and allow God to be able to. Have Direct access with us to those hearts who are longing to see them. Okay. Let's pray and then we'll stand in worship. Father, we are grateful that we have the time today to set the world aside, not so much forget about it, but to set the world on pause and allow us to worship you, to let our hearts be opened up, to hear your word, receive your word, and to do your word. And that, God, you give us that privilege to do this together in communion with you, but also with one another. And, Father, a blessing upon everybody here and those who are not here. That, God, you would reveal yourself more and more about our life with you, our journey with you, the ups and downs, maybe not ever understanding why, but always accepting the assurance that you are in the midst of all of it. So, God, as we stand, may we sing with grateful hearts. May we turn our eyes towards you and allow our time right now to just open up our hearts, to hear you, to be with you, and to be moved by you. God, we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing a little bit. Well, you know, it's the uh, Fourth of July weekend, so uh, can't go without a, at least a patriotic tribute to the fact that we need to observe the Fourth of July holiday. Our independence as a country, yeah. the independence that we have religiously to be able to worship the God that we so desire in any fashion we care to. Yeah. That is not something that is worldly uh, acceptable. So, so let's sing a little back to the republic.
Where did you actually come from? So, we're going to do a little uh, country swing kind of fun. Uh, don't sit on your hands if you don't think so. Oh, thanks, man.
welcoming Jim back and leading us in worship today. Okay. Blue us on the box, and then I don't know if you've met the lady in blue up here. I met this young lady's been here for almost five years. First time she's been up there singing with us, so that was awesome to hear. And I don't know if you've ever sang by yourself in front of anybody but yourself. It can be nerve wracking. To look out and see all your faces and staring at us and stuff like that is always kind of nerve wracking. So that was fun. Um, we're going to pray for a few items. Uh, Jordan, as she continues to seek funding uh, for her trip uh, or her work time, missions work over in Thailand. She's still uh, working to try to get up to that 50% mark, but she's close. She's about 35%. So we're going to pray for her. Um, and in general, God has many things that are on people's hearts to be aware of. So we're going to pray for that as well as over our offering. And so I'm going to ask our, our offering folks to come on up front. Oh, we didn't find it, did we? We know what those are doing. Do you? So we'll pray. By the time you hear her sprinting back in, maybe those little offering bags will be here for us, okay? She can move, can't she? Look at you! Well done. Let's pray. God, we are grateful that we can bring things to the foot of your cross and then leave them there. And some of our, at least my difficulty, is leaving them there. And God, let us learn to leave them there. This morning, God, as we lift up Jordan and her work to gain and raise funds for her mission trip to Thailand, we ask God that you continue to speak to people's hearts as she can prepare them to hear her uh, presentation and her desire to be able to go over there and work in the missions field of time. And Lord, for many, many things that we prayed about in our morning time at 9.30 this morning, so many things on people's hearts, family members, people who might be behind, be behind bars, people who are homeless, people caught up in addiction, family dynamics, all of those things, God, you're aware of. And so, Father, we just put them before your cross and ask God that you meet each of us where we need to be met, heal us where we need to be touched by your healing hand. Challenged where we need to be uplifted and challenged, God, and encouraged where sometimes we lose hope, but we need to fix our eyes on the hope that comes from you. And God, over our offering, we pray that you would uh, take what we give back and that, God, we would do it with a glad and cheerful heart and that we would do good things with it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. If, those, if you haven't been here we, and you just now heard Jordan, what's that all about? I have some letters here. If you're interested, I'll probably try to give them to Jordan and put them in the back, back there. Maybe afterwards you can be back there again today. Uh, Jordan is on her way to Thailand here shortly um, to work in a missions school to teach. She graduated from our teacher education program over here at LCSC, so I'm jacked that that's where she's going to go and spend her first year doing work and, and teaching and practicing uh, not just her skill, but developing her journey with Christ and being her. Okay? Um, I mentioned that, oh, of course you guys all knew, thanks to Tony for speaking last week. I appreciate the, the ability to be able to call on he and Lewis uh, to step in and, uh, and carry the load up front. Uh, I was in Roseburg, Oregon, Eugene, Oregon, Portland, and I made a, you know, I wasn't supposed to go this way, but I did. I'm driving north from Roseburg up to Portland, and I hear the weather report on about the Oregon coast. And it's overcast on I-5. And the weather report on the coast was clear skies, high 60s, low 70s. I turned left and I went out and spent the night on the Oregon coast and I sat and just had some time with God. And, uh, but I got to tell you, it was so good to come home. As much as I love the Oregon coast, it's really not much of anything without my wife, Jennifer, and my family or whoever might be able to join us. It's just not the same. It's beautiful to sit there and look at it. Uh, but it just was kind of, I don't want to call it hollow either because you can't be with God and be hollow. It's just so much richer uh, with Jennifer. So yesterday, coming back from Moses Lake, that was my last stop. Uh, it was great to get on the top of the hill and look down and see home. It was good to see home, to see the valleys. And then yesterday, working uh, on a property, it was just so much fun to work all day long uh, on different parts of our property. But I've got this one piece of, of our property that has been giving me grief. 
I don't know if you remember, it's been at least two or three months ago that we had a windstorm sweep through here and probably knocked trees down and knocked three trees down on our property. And uh, it wasn't probably a couple weeks after that that I got the chainsaw and I chopped it down to where it was about this much left and tried digging up the stumps and the roots. And they were big roots. And I could not get that stump to budge. And so my goal yesterday was to get out and get to the root of the problem and chop that baby down. And I spent probably almost three hours chopping. You know, Bill's, if you look under, in the dictionary, you look under lumber, Lumberjack, you don't see my face anywhere, okay? Even under Axe Handler, you might not see my face, yeah. So I'm, I'm chopping and digging, I wet the ground beforehand, and I gotta tell you, every time I had to sit down and take a break from the sun and drink water, all I could think about is how that thing reminds me of sometimes my efforts to get rid of sin how deep the root is. Sometimes we can't even see it. Sometimes we buried it in our our denial, our refusal to open up the door, that little section to God. Uh, and, and it takes pain. It's a painful effort and a, and a purposeful effort to get rid of the root and, and, and toss it aside. But I tell you, I finally got rid of it. Got that thing chopped out of there and it's got these big prongs, big old knifing things sticking out and I set it down and later today I said Jennifer I, I, I haven't hunted uh, but once so I am not a hunter but I see pictures of these people sitting with their big you know 4.6.8 point things you know animals whatever they might be that uh, whether they're elk or deer and I said you're gonna take a picture of me sitting by my elk you know, so I have this thing here that I'm squatted down beside it, and I've got a, it's probably an 18 point uh, tree stump, you know, so I might post it sometime because I just cracked up. This would be kind of fun to do, you know? And then this morning, getting up and just sitting and being in God's presence outside, and, and uh, we are blessed, y'all. I know that we have frustrations, I know that we have some trials and turbulence and stuff that may try to steal away hope or whatever it might be, but we are blessed when we focus on Him. It was just so good to sit and think about Him. On the coast, sitting in, uh, outside in, in the shade of one of the trees that didn't get blown down, um, and just contemplate how blessed I look at our property there that I haven't taken the best, best care of. I haven't taken the best care of. God's blessed us with a place that's beautiful there. Um, blessed me with a wife that, that continues to love me and be with me. Um, Four kids, three beautiful grandchildren, a great church to be a part of, um, just so much. Uh, and, and, and God is too good. He is incredibly good all the time. And uh, say that again. And all the time. Yeah. But then I, I wondered about this part of God's work, except I worked on my laptop to get the computer, or get my sermon ready and, and had my notes. And I went to uh, my office to print them off, and I couldn't get in my computer, so I couldn't print off my notes. God bless you. See you later. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there going, okay, God, this is either going to be really, really horrible, or I'm going to try to get out of the way, and you're going to make it great. Uh, I know exactly kind of what I'm going to talk about. How do you like those two words together? I know exactly kind of what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> yeah, God is too good. Hit it. Lindsay is here today with us, aren't you? And uh, Katie's birthday. Oh, sorry, kids. I gotta just miss kids. My goodness, man. I gotta be reminded about the offering too often, and, and where the where the bags might be, but also for our kids. So, kids, come up real quickly. Remind me where I was, okay? Somebody make sure I don't forget. This can be an adventurous thing. Lisa, thank you. <laughs> She's back there pointing at Katie like this. And I'm thinking, oh, it's somebody's birthday? No, kids are got to be dismissed. <laughs> Father, we are grateful for this small little group. But good to see Lexi here, too. God, just for their uh, uh, their desire to know you more, and we pray over the teaching time downstairs, that God, they would know more and discover more about your love for them, and that, God, you would water the heart and soul with your word. Let these, let these children be blessed by you as we are blessed by them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Fisher. Go ahead and follow her out of here, okay? Lindsay. 
Lindsay doesn't know many of us, okay? But this morning she came to church, her and mom, and they were outside waiting to get inside. Okay? As Sharon has done for years, this young lady who doesn't know us much trusted us to carry her up the stairs. Woohoo! Come in here. Trust is not an easy thing. I do activities with teachers all the time and ask them to do trust falls. And trust falls are funny because you're supposed to just lean back and fall into people's arms. And what's funny is to watch them because the person who's supposed to catch them is back here. And so they'll, they'll say, are you ready? And they'll say, yeah. And so they'll go. <laughs> you know, stay there. They're not willing to trust all the way. But Lindsay trusted us. I want to thank you for giving us the honor to bring you in with us, young lady. Thank you. <laughs> nice to have you here, sweetheart. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you to turn to Jude. Jude. You're a Beatles fan, you know I'm not referring to hey Jude. Okay. We're going to take a look at um, contending for the faith. Contending for our faith and contending for being a good witness to a faith, for the faith of the world that they would come to know and we wouldn't be stumbling blocks, that we wouldn't cause people to trip up, but that because of our attention to our own life with Him, that God can use us in a powerful way. And I'm, I'm reminded of this. I, I love the fact that Jim had us sing the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Because we are in a battle. We might not think it very much. We might, not, we might get caught up not even considering the fact that we are in a war. Because we're not aware of visible fighting going on. That we're not, like a soldier, exposed to the daily threat, physical daily threat, of bullets flying at you. And the real possibility of death. We don't see it. Having to jump into a uh, foxhole or to escape very quickly, something like that. We don't see it all the time. But what we're not aware of is behind the scenes in the spiritual domain, we are having all kinds of bullets flying our way. All kinds of attacks that are taking place. And the enemy wants nothing more than to cause us to lose heart. To cause us to kind of step back from paying attention to our daily walk with him. So that we do cause people to trip up. We don't create an open door with our love, with our gentleness and our peacefulness and our righteousness through Christ to help people see who Christ is. The world has plenty of, and I use this term very carefully, Christians that are not good examples of Christians. We fight amongst ourselves, don't we? We fight too much. Instead of a, a church being a hospital, it ends up being a place where wounding takes place. The world knows and has become very leery of Christianity. And I understand that. Because we I think there have been many times and time periods in, uh, in our country as well as the world in which humankind has gotten in the way of God's message. And has caused people to be shy of it. So how do we contend for the faith? Maintain a very strong relationship with the truth of God's word. The very essence that Jesus Christ is really the only way. And yet still guide people back to him. So we're going to read just a few verses here in the very beginning. And then at the end of Jude. Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ. A brother of James. To those who are the call. That be you and I. If you trust in Christ, you believe in Christ. He is, he is speaking to you and I. Beloved in God the Father, kept for Jesus Christ. If there's a word in there that you should circle, highlight, or something that's a word, kept. We are His possession. That once we give our life truly to Christ, and we've accepted Him into our life as our Savior, our Lord, our King, and our Friend, we are then placed into His hands. We are kept. Now, we might fight against it. I don't know if, you, if, if you've ever done this, but you fight to get out of that grip, that grasp, that gracious grasp in order to perform. Pursue a, a fleshly desire or a selfish inclination. The great thing about it is that he might loosen it enough for us to kind of wander, but his grasp is always waiting to hold on to us again and again and again. Kept for Christ Jesus. May, me, may mercy and peace and love be multiplied to you. What a great greeting. Ever, anybody ever written a letter starting like that? What a great way to start a letter. Beloved, this is at the very heart of our what we're called to. Beloved, while I was making every effort to write you about our common salvation, I felt the necessity to write you to you, to you appealing that you contend apathetically, that you contend kind of, that you contend part-time, 
that you contend earnestly. Look up the word earnestly sometime. Look up the word earnestly. That you contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints through Christ. That we contend earnestly. Then for the next several verses, we're going to pick up reading in verse 17. The next series of verses is all about the depravity of humankind. And even about the angels' departure. All pursuing selfishness. All pursuing things that were uh, not godly. Things that were ugly. Sometimes in the name of God even. But sometimes in the name of, of peace or, or social movements and stuff like that. We detract and move away from Christ. And there's all kinds of, of incredible dynamic pictures of what happens when humankind does that. When societies, when churches, when countries, when individuals follow that depraved direction and don't follow the direction of Jesus Christ. He describes some of them as autumn trees without fruit, doubly dead, uprooted. Woo. That's absolutely dead. And it picks up in verse 17. But you, again, talking to you and I, but you, beloved, ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, that they were saying to you, in the last times there shall be mockers following after their own ungodly lusts. These are the ones who cause divisions, worldly-minded, devoid of the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, the love of God, Waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. And have mercy on some who are down. Save others, snatching them out of the fire. And of some have mercy with fear, hating even the garment polluted by the flesh. He's praying that we would continue to contend for the faith by building our faith up. By building ourselves up in His great love. By continuing to build that part up of our root system. Just like it says in the first psalm, that we would be like stream, like a tree planted by streams of water with deep roots in our God. Then he goes on to this. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. Wait a second, Bill. Did you say we all stumble? We do. But stumbling in a way that causes us to destroy ourselves or lose our way in our faith. Who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. In order to contend for the faith, there are two aspects to this. To contend for the faith, we need to make sure that we are building up our faith. Scripture tells us that we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We're to take it serious, yes, with the joy that comes with it. But we're to work out our salvation. That's like if we go to church or if we think we're going to work out, we go to a, uh, oh, let's say, what, what's the name of the health club? Adco. We go to Adco or some health facility with all the weight machines, all the bicycles, all the treadmills, racquetball courts, all that stuff. And we go in and we sit down and we watch people work out. We watch them for a while. We go, wow. And we get up and we leave and say, that was a good workout. <laughs> we haven't done anything. What did you say? My kind of workout. When we come to church, we are working out our salvation unless we leave and don't take it with us. Then we're just like the person who sits and watches people work out and says, what a good workout and leaves. It doesn't get anything out of it. Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas dinner, Easter dinner, sitting down at the table and going, wow, and never taking a bite. Leaving and go, that was a great feast. Not having any indication of what it tasted like. But being able to contend for our faith, we have to build up our faith so that we can be a witness to the world that loves well, that knows the truth and can guide people back to the truth of Jesus Christ, His Word, through good, effective witnessing. So we have two of those that we are thinking about. And I'm going to ask you to turn, keep your finger here because we'll probably come back to this. Um, this is where I just lost my note, okay? First Timothy. Turn back to 1 Timothy, just a few pages back, chapter 6. How do we contend for the faith? How do we build up and work out our salvation? 
1 Timothy chapter 6. And I don't know what the title of your chapter 6 says, but this is, again, speaking to all of us. Don't let the title, mine says, instructions to those who minister. Some of you might think, well, I don't have a ministry. I'm not doing anything that is a minister's work. Let me correct you. You are all ministers. When we give our life to Christ, we become the priesthood of all believers. That we are ministers of God's grace. Sometimes we are ministers and we never bring out the word of God, but because we love well the way Jesus has us, people are inclined to say, hmm, what's up with these two? And start to understand that there's something different, and that difference is Jesus Christ. So we're going to look, look at the verse 11. It says, but flee from these things, you man of God, and pursue something. Flee from what? The verses above this are all about the same things that were in uh, in Jude. All the depravity, all the things that cause us to lose our way, driven by selfishness, driven by the flesh, driven by distance from our God. Remember, God doesn't doesn't leave. He never doesn't move, but we do. We move off course. I read a story this week about a, two gentlemen who were standing watching these powerful engines, uh, train engines, go by. Just how strong they are, how powerful they are. And one guy says, man, these are just the most powerful engines, the most powerful things I can imagine. And the other guy said, yeah, but they're nothing if they're off the track. If they're off the track, they're just a big piece of metal that can't do anything. For us to be effective, for us to contend for the faith, for us when we pursue our, our relationship with Christ, it is important that we stay on track with Him. He is our guide. He is our rail system that keeps us focused, that keeps us heading in the right direction. So flee from those things that cause you to jump track and get off the track and become just a pile of iron that is worthless. Let God make you worthwhile by getting you back on track. How do we do that? We pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance and gentleness. Here we go again. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I love what I read here. That we are to pursue things that build us up and they are godliness. They are faith. They are love, perseverance, and gentleness. Wow. That's an incredible... In, in some people's minds, it might sound kind of weak or meek, but they're not. They're incredibly powerful attributes of Christians who can stand firm with gentleness. We can't love well unless we are in, on the track. We can love for a little while, but unless we're on the track being guided by God's grace and His love, it's hard for us to love well. That reflects who Jesus Christ is in our life. It's hard for us to persevere unless we're on the track. It's hard for us to maintain and contend for the faith and to overcome things and fight that good fight of faith without being on track. That's the hard part of our life. That's the individual part of our life. But, as Scripture tells us that we're to gather together, okay? We're to gather together to make sure that we encourage one another, that we worship together, but many, many Christians pursue it on their own. I don't know what you're going to do this 4th of July, but this is just for charcoal briquette, the lone one. If I lit this on fire, doused it in, in uh, lighter fluid, and lit it on fire, it would flame for a while. And then it would start to burn as an ember. But by itself, what's going to happen to it? It's going to die. It's going to lose its warmth. Lose its fire. That's why I need you. That's why you need each other. To contend for the faith is difficult when we're on our own. Because it's tough to keep the... It, we are called to do it on our own. Understand that. Ourself. I just gave the list of things that we're to pursue. The best way to pursue those is when we are next to one another and we're in a pile of requests and we're burning together. We can fight more effectively that fight for the faith. And it is a fire of gentleness, of righteousness, of godliness, of love and perseverance. Those are the things that the world looks at and goes, huh, they're a little bit different. 
is that there's something unique about these folks. That is a critical part of our relationship with Christ, which is why communion is so important. Communion. Union. Okay? Communion, sharing it together. I read a quote about with Mother Teresa recently. It was an interviewer came up and interviewed uh, uh, Mother Teresa and he said, how is it that you pray? What is it that you talk about with God? And Mother Teresa says, well, I don't talk. I listen. And then the interviewer said, well, what does God tell you? And her, her uh, response was, he doesn't talk, he listens. And if you can't figure that out, I can't explain it to you. Now that's something to contemplate. That when we come before God, it's important that we listen. Because scripture tells us, peace, be still and know that I am God. Be still, listen. And at the same time, God is what? Listening, because he listens to the deep, deep recesses of our heart and our mind. And what he's listening for is that desire to draw close. Our desire to draw close. That desire to contend for the faith. Sometimes, and there's a song by Amy Grant that's such a great song. Um, I just like the name of it. God loves a mother's cry. God loves a sinner's cry. God loves a soldier's... I can't remember all of the words that are in there. And, and sometimes the best songs in God's ears don't come from steeples. They come from the depths of despair. When we know we need it. When we desire to know it. When we feel like we've been distant for a while. Or not distant, but we're in a fight. That contention for the, for the faith. And we say, God, get me back on the rails. Put me back on the rails and stoke my engine so that I can strongly proceed. Strong in the faith of gentleness. That's what's amazing to think about in this passage. Of gentleness, of peace, of love, perseverance. Strong, strong attributes of a Christian who is firm in their faith. Built up with the roots that go deep into Christ. That go deeply into our God. Those kinds of things are what we're called to. When we call, we're called here in June to contend for the faith with gentleness, to pursue Him, to have an idea of what it is He calls us to. Again, Philippians 2 tells us to work out our faith. Work out our faith. God is an incredible God. And we discover more and more about the depth of that incredible the more we're willing to, as one of the songs that Jim and, and Jordan sang, and that is that when we throw our future at the foot of the cross and trust Him to take it. God calls us to take steps. Absolutely. God calls us to take responsibility for that which He has given us, but particularly the gift that is Jesus Christ as our Savior, our friend, our King, our, and our Lord. To take good care of that. That's why He says, and we just, and we just read it just a second ago, that is to flee from those things. Look at that list sometime. Take a look at the things that were to flee. Because somewhere in the midst of that list is something that maybe we struggle with. Something that maybe we have a tough time letting go of and running away from. Sometimes we might run for a period of time and then finally move our way back. The key part of this is that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because absolutely nothing can separate us from His love. Absolutely nothing. We will fall. Guaranteed. We will struggle. But it's important to remember that, that we are kept by a, a God who understands what it's like to walk in the flesh. To get tired. To be lonely. To feel the hurt that comes from a loss of a friend. And to feel the sting of people who walk next to Him and turn on Him in a 24-hour time period. He knows what your hurt is like. And He keeps you close right here. We're to contend for the faith by staying on the rails. By being like, not as a lone briquette, but finding ways to be a part of this kind of gathering. Carrie, you prayed this morning a Thanksgiving prayer for being in this church. Hope you don't mind me sharing that but also for being in the women's study. She is finding a way 
to be with other embers here today. And then during the week, finding another opportunity to be around more embers. That way, when she's away from the pile, her, her, her coal is strong. The fire is strong. And then she comes back with the pile. Then goes out and is alone and fighting. We get back with the pile. That's why church life is so vitally important. So vitally important. So that our embers stay strong. So that when we're out and about, when we leave today, my prayer for you is that you're not sitting here watching Bill work out his salvation of faith, but you're taking it in so that when you leave, you begin your work. And you will have spent your time working out what is going on in your life and giving it all over to Christ. Our God loves you, knows what's on your heart, knows what's concerning you, what's concerning you, what's bothering you, knows what you need, not what you want, but what you need. And it's that difference that we begin to understand the longer we're on the rail. The longer we're on the rail, the stronger our steam engine runs. And we stoke it. The fire of the Holy Spirit, through His Word, through worship, through fellowship with one another. Amen? We're going to have communion today. We're going to celebrate communion. A time to examine our hearts. A time to reflect upon the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. To reflect upon the fact that He crawled onto the cross knowing that you and I would fail somewhere along the line. And He still went to the cross and said, Bill, you need this. You need this because I love you. I love you. When Jesus was with the disciples on the night that He was betrayed, He took the bread and He broke it. And he looked every one of the disciples in the eye and says, This is my body, which will be broken for you. Broken, beaten, pulverized, hung up to die, hung for a while, and finally died. Do this in remembrance of that act. Do this in remembrance of Jesus Christ. And he took the cup. And he gave that to the disciples. And he said, This is the cup of a new an everlasting covenant, fulfilling the law. It was a great prayer this morning, yeah. And man. I called you a young man. Good, that was kind of cool, huh? Um, <laughs> I just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Fulfilling the, that Jesus, when he went on the cross, didn't nullify the law. He fulfilled the law, but he brought this new covenant of grace into our lives so that when we give our life to Christ, God looks down on us and he doesn't see Bill Hain and his filthy rags of righteousness, which the Christian church tells us that our, rag, our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. But he looks on me and he sees Jesus Christ. What a great thing for my God to see. That he sees me, Jesus Christ, through. Right through it. And he sees Christ. And not my stupidity, not my anger, not my lust, not my selfishness, not any of that kind of stuff. What he loves to know is that, like Jairus, the synagogue leader, the first thing that he did before he ever came to Christ was what? Fall down at his feet in humility and say, I need you. That's what communion is a great thing for. To help us say, God, I'm off track. Or I'm, I'm on track, but I'm, I'm hurt. I need your help in your strength. Let me fall on the knees of my heart. Under this new covenant, everlasting covenant, the blood that was shed, still for you and I, for the forgiveness of our sins. You will never forget. And I have to remind myself of this. As I pray for family members and good friends, that he who will get a good word is faithful to continue. Our job is to contend for the faith by praying, by being gentle. Don't confuse that with being weak. Because Jesus was gentle. And he was the king of the universe. And we're called to love like he, like he loves us. And to pursue his faith. So that when people come in contact with us, they experience somebody who listens. They experience someone who encourages. They experience someone who loves well. And they also experience someone who knows the truth of of God's word. 
in my mind in that order so that we can then get them the desire that seeks God's word and the relationship with him. I want you to bow your heads. Oh, let me say this. If you haven't been here when we've done communion, we do it different ways sometimes. But we have the bread over here, the elements, the bread and the juice is here. Take it and dip it into the cup. And if you would like, what I would encourage you to do is to come up with others. To come up with those who are near you. Take a moment to stand at the table. And if somebody's willing just to say a quick prayer, as we gather around God's table, that somebody would just to do that. Don't be worried about hurrying, please. Sometimes we rush through communion. We get up, we get up, we move on. We forget about it. Take the time. If we're in a health club, take the time in the sauna. Because you can't experience the sauna if you spread out of it. Take some time. It's needed in the presence of God. So now bow your heads and close your eyes. God, we love you. Every one of us, Father, needs you desperately to live out the life that you've called us to live. And each and every one of us struggle with certain things. And God, you know what they are. You know that this week, even maybe within the last 24 hours, somebody struggled with something. And God, the enemy wants to come in and say, you are worthless, you're nothing. God, we pray for a, a removal because of who you are. That Lord, you would rebuke that voice out of our minds, out of our hearts. Because God, in you, we are worth while. We are worth everything because of what you've done for us, because of who Jesus Christ is. But God, you also love it when we put the things out on the table that are, stuck, that are taking us off the track or causing our, our ember to kind of dwindle away and draw cold. And so Father, this morning, in the quietness of your hearts this morning, may you take a moment to hear our hearts as we confess whatever's in the way. Lord, help us to leave it at the foot of the cross, to walk away and leave it there. Yeah, we would participate with you, with each other. In Jesus' name. When you're ready, come on out.
going to be my closing prayer today. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died. Yes, rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for you and I, who shall separate us from the love of Christ. So tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sore. In all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let that, keep that ever strong, lit strong and burning strong. Nothing can separate us from the love of our God. This week, stay on the rails. Stay on the rails and work out your salvation with fear and trembling so that we can contend for the sake of our own end and the world that needs to know it through our love, our gentleness, and our peace. God bless you. Have a really good week. A safe Fourth of July. Pray. For, I know the firefighters are probably praying for rain on, on, on the day before, but have a good week. Enjoy the time. Remember, we are a country that is free still. Still. Amen. Have a good day.
Thank you.